So today's insight is Rebecca Maloney from Career Garage. So Rebecca, take it away, my lovely. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, so again, morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to bore you for a bit longer this time around. Um, so really what I wanted to go into was the sort of the mindset of somebody who might need um, career guidance, basically, um, and why I set the business up in the first place. So I've been in traditional recruitment for coming up to 30 years. Who would have thought? Um, it's a it's an interesting sector, to say the least. Um, and because it's just me and my company, I don't have any staff, nor do I intend to have any staff. Um, I've sort of got, got to do the good bits of the recruitment as well as the bad bits. And the bad bits obviously involve letting some candidates know that they've not been successful on a particular role that they've gone for or an interview that they've had. The feedback could be good. They could have done a really good job. There was just somebody better. Um, or the feedback could be uh, there might be a weak area that I can obviously pass on to that person and make them a better candidate in the long run. But making them a better candidate in the long run doesn't actually help me because I'm not a great big recruitment company. So when I've worked for big companies in the past, um, between you and your colleagues, there might be 15 very similar roles that you're recruiting for a first line, second line, IT help desk person in the greater Manchester area. So I might put someone forward, get good feedback, but they didn't get the job. And I could then pass them on to my colleague who's also got a very similar job, recruiting in a similar geographical area and get him into another job. Because I am not a big company and don't have all those similar jobs in similar areas at any one time, I would spend time with people, give them the feedback, and send them off into the world as a much better applicant, which was going to benefit another recruiter or benefit the actual company they were getting interviewed by. And I was like, hmm, I'm sort of giving a lot of information away here for free. And um, I'm, I know I'm helping people. I know there's value in what I'm doing. And basically that's when Career Garage was born. So the process for me is I would review, rewrite, revamp, reformat somebody's CV. Um, are they thinking about it being read on phones and tablets and not just on desktops? So is it readable on all different tech platforms? Are they considering artificial intelligence when they're doing job applications? There are a lot of clues in job specs. You need to be mirroring the words and the adjectives and the phrases that the employer is looking for, because those key phrases and words is what has been put into the computer in the artificial intelligence side of life. Those are the words the computer is looking for. So quite um, often, the best candidate for a job can actually be getting deleted because the computer can't interpret anything. You've either said that you've done something or you haven't said that you've done something. It's not a human reading the application and going, oh, they've done A, B and C, so it stands to reason they'll have done D, E, F, and G. A computer doesn't think like that. It just says, oh, they've just done A, B, and C, but I'm looking for D, E, and F, and they've not mentioned it. So in the bin. So I'm about giving people the strategy of what the machine is looking for. It's kind of like being given a, game, a box of Monopoly. There's a game of Monopoly, stick a few kids around it. They'll probably work out that they need to throw the dice. They'll probably all want to be the dog and they might have a bit of fun for 10 minutes. And then they'll start thinking, why, why are we doing this? What's the aim? What, what's, what's the end process? And the, the rules aren't there. They don't know about buying houses. They don't know about putting hotels on there. They don't know about charging people for landing on their property. They, just, they don't know. So you're going to get pretty bored pretty quickly. Um, and then panic sets in. So in the world of job search, if you're so unhappy with your current situation or you've been made redundant, or you've been sacked or whatever stressful situation has, has, has arisen, then we need a strategy. There needs to be a process and a direction to job search. Once someone starts applying for jobs, if they're not getting a response of any description, then self-doubt is very quickly on the heels of that person. Self-doubt, uh, a knock to people's confidence, oh my God, I've never applied for a job in the past and never not got the interview. What's now going wrong? Well, your CV might not have actually been read by a human being yet. There's a, what's going wrong is you're not working out how you need to be applying. So I'm about making people strategic, giving them a plan, 
to get from A to B that's measurable. Um, don't waste time applying for jobs that you don't want. And also don't just sit around waiting for the perfect job application to, or the perfect job advert to be on, on the job board you happen to be looking at. So I'm about getting people to take control um, getting to use LinkedIn really effectively, approaching the HR managers and HR directors with a covering letter, with a human explanation as to why they're looking for something new and um, proving that you've already looked into the company, that you believe that they might have some pain points that you as an employee can actually help solve um, and become really human. People want to help people if they can. And if it's a really good covering letter explaining I've been 20 years in teaching and now I'm looking to do whatever it is. Why are you looking to do that? What skills are you going to bring over with you? And if you can get someone actually wanting to help you as a human being, that's when you bridge the gap between being in um, job A and wanting to be in job B. There's something out there called the hidden job market where actually there is a job going, there are vacancies going, but no one's actually put a job spec together and no one's actually advertising that job yet because it's hard work. So you've got the HR manager or whoever trying to communicate with the hiring manager. They're trying to work out the job spec. Um, somebody's wanting A, B and C. Somebody else is wanting D and F. The job spec gets put out and the candidates are looking at it thinking, are you needing to take two people on here and, and not just one because this job's evolved into something ridiculous. Also, the client then doesn't really know what they're recruiting for because one manager's input and another manager's input is just confusing the process. If somebody puts their approach in or their CV in or their application in before the company have actually worked out what it is they want, you're really saving that company a headache. They'll start having a chat with, how can we make this person fit? So instead of going to market and having to wade through a lot of wrong and bad applications, maybe, actually by somebody approaching them directly, you might get the HR like, oh my God, we don't even have to advertise. This person would be great. Um, let's get them in. And it's not the right way to recruit and companies would be told that's not the way to recruit. But let's be honest, it's a really easy option. So when a company is actually placing a job ad, They've already created their own avatar. They're already saying he or she. They're already imagining an 18-year-old or a 50-year-old. They've already put their spin on who they imagine being in that seat. By the applicant taking control and making the approach, they're making themselves that avatar so that the company rethinks, really how can we make this person fit? Could this person go on that team or that team? How do we make this work? You've totally changed the order of the power in effect. Most applicants uh, feel weaker than the actual employer. By being the applicant that approaches on a, on, a, on a straight level, you're actually coming in at a much better communication point than just being a subservient applicant. Actually, you're being a proactive applicant. You're out there trying to find your own opportunities. That results in a whole different attraction game and that will bring a whole different result back. Um, please don't let people sit at home doing traditional job search. It doesn't work. Get them to speak to me. I will save them so much pain and time. Um, and actually, I've had people say, oh, my God, this is amazing. I actually feel excited about going and job searching. Whoever in their life has felt excited about job searching? No one. But if you do it differently and you take control over it and you're doing it on your terms, yeah, it can actually be a really powerful way of job searching. So I'm kind of about project managing someone's job search behaviour is probably the easiest way of describing what I do. I think that's probably about seven or eight minutes. Don't want to bore you too much. Happy to answer any questions. Um, and I would like to point people to either my website or my LinkedIn page where I've got some really good testimonials about how I've changed people's mindsets. And I think Sam, utility Sam, would be really interested in one of my clients is now absolutely banging out UWI. They've gone from being employed unhappily, being made redundant, having a session with me, me talking about, well, why are you not mentioning the fact that you do UW? It's not on your CV. I know you do it, but it's not on your CV. Da -da 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 whole different mindset came out of that hour and now I literally can't go on UW's Facebook page 
and not see one half of this particular couple absolutely nailing it. So yeah, changing mindsets. Love it. Absolutely love it. And like I say, if you come across confident, if you've not got confidence in your own abilities, then how can you expect anyone else to either? So yeah, that was fantastic. Thanks. I think the other problem you've got is you've got dead helpful parents that go, uh, I've been helping them job search. I've been helping them to do their applications. And it's like, but when did you apply for anything? Are you aware that artificial intelligence is going on behind the scenes? Um, probably not. And also... That's an interesting question to pose, actually. I mean, I, I don't know the last time I actually looked for a job. No. So, you it's know, hideous, and yet yeah, we, yeah, and then we want to actually help, you know, our children and that. So, has anyone got any questions at all? I've got a question for you. What has been the most interesting role that you've helped somebody to have the confidence to go for? There is somebody that I met in uh, 1N who was a virtual PA off the back of having been she was actually a head teacher so her cv was just teaching teaching head teaching head teaching head teacher that that was it um, she's now a project manager in the nhs she wow. she could not she she just couldn't see how she got from a to b and she was a very interesting person to do the session with because you know teachers they're always right and i had to tell her that she wasn't on quite a few issues and you could see that there was a bit of a headlock was maybe going to start happening and I had to say to her why are we on this call it's because you decided you wanted some advice so let's forget what you've been doing and if you want a job as a teacher brilliant your cv's fantastic but you're telling me you don't um and she was doing something silly like say an application asked for um an overview of your skill set and it was telling you 800 words or whatever no no she knew more she was more important than that she was doing two and three thousand words and I'm trying to tell her it's not being read you've been given a very clear instruction that you are blatantly ignoring it is not being read if you're saving the best bit till word 900 it's not being read and oh she was really not happy um <laughs> But a, a week later, she emailed me and said, I've got it down to 500 words. And she did go away and she did take heed. And, and I think that's it. It's, even if the computer's just been set to accept 800 words, the, the rest is just being chopped off. It's not being read by anybody. So when you're applying for jobs, there are big, big clues and people need to use them. And that's why they need to come to someone like you. So it's no, that was really, sense. really interesting. Yeah. It's common Thank sense, you but it's stuck. So if you much. don't know it, you don't know it, and and that's it. So you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. Excellent.